Great, thank you very much. Um, hello, and thank you for joining us today for Bullhorn Academy's August webinar. My name again is Colleen Murray, and today we'll be taking a look at some Bullhorn tips and tricks so that you can get the most out of your database. For example, were you aware that you can run a search to locate records that don't have email addresses? Great thing for database cleanup. You can also track the performance of users by setting up target goals so people can look and see where they're at in their performance. And you can use custom objects in case you've run out of custom fields, giving you a lot more flexibility with your database. This webinar is going to cover different aspects of Bullhorn, so we'll be jumping around different parts of the system. And again, this webinar is being recorded. We'll be answering questions from the chat afterwards. We also have documentation that we'll be sending out following this webinar to cover every topic in more detail. To begin, I'll cover some quick tips in the slideshow. We'll transition over to Bullhorn so I can show off a few more. All right, let's get started. The first feature we're going to talk about is called goals and quotas. With goals and quotas, you're able to track performance goals and sales quotas for your users. To do this, you set up weekly or monthly targets and measure your users' performance relative to those targets. Targets are set up and viewable from the goals and quotas list view. In order to do this, you would click the settings button at the top right of the list to define your targets. Targets can consist of the number of records added in a time frame, such as a placement, the number of notes added with a specific type, and the number of appointments added with a specific type. Okay. After targets are defined, simply click the Add Goal button or Add Quota if you're viewing sales quotas to do just that. After this is done, you can view users' progress from the Goals and Quotas list. If you're on the Enterprise Edition and you would like to have goals and quotas enabled for your company, please have an account or support contact reach out to Bullhorn Support, either through a ticket or a chat. Um, we'll be happy to get this up and running for you. Next, I'd like to talk about um, another list within Bullhorn, the placement change request list. Previously, placement change requests were handled via the placement list and didn't provide much detail on the actual changes that were being requested. The change requests column on the placement list only displays the number of change requests that placement has. To find out what change was being requested, you would actually have to open the placement, click into the change request tab, and review each change individually. The other change request columns pictured here cannot be sorted or filtered in any way. Now, we have a dedicated list where you can view all change requests. The change request list provides all details pertaining to change requests so that you can handle them more efficiently. You can see when a change was requested, who requested it, and even the changes that they want to make. The list also displays previous changes that were made to placements. The columns that you see here can be filtered and sorted. To approve or reject a change request, simply click the ID. If you're looking for an easier way to manage change requests, then you'll definitely want this in your database. This list is available to all editions of Bullhorn, so please contact support via chat or resource center ticket or a phone call to get it enabled. Let's switch gears a little, discuss how you can locate records that are missing email addresses. This is useful if you want to add email addresses to records that don't have one, or if you want to archive records that are missing email addresses. Simply put, if you're looking to perform some database cleanup, this is a really excellent tool. Oops. Beg pardon. All right. So from the candidate contact or list lead uh, lead list view, you'll run a search that excludes all records that have an email address. Since every email address has the at sign in it, you can exclude it so that it will um, return records that do not have one. 
if you utilize multiple email fields in your database, you may need to run this search multiple times. Sorry, I didn't show you this cor correctly. Let me show you better. See how in the uh, search we've got additional criteria defining email one, exclude. We put the at sign and an asterisk to, um, so that it will not show us any returns that have an at sign in it. And again, because at sign is necessary for a valid email address, that will only return you a list of things that are of records that do not have an email address. And you would just switch it out to email two, email three, whatever, however many emails uh, fields you have on your records. So sorry, you couldn't see that before. Okay. All right. So after you uh, perform the search to look for email addresses that are missing, you would simply um, edit, use your inline editing to add the emails um, and you could save that search as a favorite. It will let you run it um, over and over again for, uh, I don't know if you have a quarterly cleanup day, but that would be a good idea. Um, so then let's talk about after you add email addresses to the records, you'll more than likely be emailing some of these people. So if you do that, you'll want to consider logging outbound emails as notes. Logging outbound emails as notes is an alternative way to keep track of the emails you send from Bullhorn and from your third-party email provider. It requires an active email integration with Bullhorn. Of course, emails are still tracked on the activity tab as pictured on this slide. So then you might ask, well, why would I want to log outbound emails as notes? Well, happy to tell you. Logging outbound emails as notes is great if you require users to add notes to records when they send emails. Plus, if notes are added to your view layout, you'll be able to quickly open a record and see emails that were sent. By default, notes added by outbound emails are logged with a note action of email. And if you're sending outbound emails from within Bullhorn, you may want to consider adding an opt-out link to those messages. Now, we'll always add an opt-out link on mass mails that you send to more than 10 recipients. However, you now have the choice to add an opt-out link to every message sent from Bullhorn. If you would like to log outbound emails as notes or add an opt-out link on every email sent from Bullhorn, contact support and they can definitely help you with that. Okay. Let's end the slideshow here and jump into the system to show off a few more tips and tricks. Let me pull up Bullhorn, bear with me. There we go. If you're like me, then you have... Um, a ton of note actions. So you can see all the note actions and we've got, look at how long the scroll list goes, quite a few. Sometimes it's hard to find the type of note action you're actually looking for. Um, it could lead to errors in how people track their actions. If you've do occasionally get a concern from your uh, employees that it's hard to make sure you're using the right one, consider grouping them together. By using hyphens, um, you're able to group similar note actions together. For example, in mine, notice how everything at the top is about candidate, okay? All candidate-related note actions are grouped together. Then as you look at my actions, you can see that at the bottom, I grouped together um, all my internal note actions. Now I did this using system settings. Let me show you where. Okay. So I went to the menu, I went to tools, and I chose system settings. And this is a page that, honestly, the first time I looked at it, I was a little intimidated because there's nine, or, there's nine pages, 25 per page. That's a lot. Um, so knowing how to search through it is key for finding what you're looking for. 
And what I've learned is that if I just type in maybe just one word, I can often find what I'm looking for. So I'm looking for uh, my list of note actions. If I just type note, then I can find my note action list right here. Okay. Now, I drag the corner over so I can see everything I'm looking at. And what you can see is that I organized them in the order I'd like them listed. And then where I wanted a break, I just put a comma and a few hyphens and another comma, just as though it was going to be a piece of my list view or my action list view. So um, that shows up as a, um, as a little break. Okay. Super easy. And we'll just go ahead and close this. Oops. There are a lot of other system settings that deal with notes. For example, settings exist that will allow you to expand all notes um, or to highlight um, notes by default. Let me show you. Okay. It lets you uh, default notes to be fully expanded, and if it's set to false, um, notes are uh, collapsed. Okay, so if you want it to appear as, as, a, as an expanded list, just change this to true. All right. There's even a, a note action type that will allow you to um, remember the last um, comment action that was used. Okay, and it will default to the last, if, if it's set to true, um, it'll default to the last action that the user um, uses. It's, it's a little time saver, so, okay. If you want to see what other settings exist, you really don't need to know the exact name. Typically, using maybe one of the entity words, so candidate. Okay, shows me all of the... Um, uh, system settings that contain uh, the word candidate and it does look like there is a setting that um, uh, will prompt the user to add a new note. This is a very um, um, desirable action from your end user so uh, it's changing that to true. Now they will all need to put a note in when they um, add a candidate. Okay. Now, let's say that instead of adding a note for every candidate, you wanted to require some more complex data, such as emergency contact information. Well, using custom objects, you can create an extra tab or section on the record for such cases. This is especially helpful if I've run out of custom fields or want to include a large number of fields for something like emergency contact information. But I don't want to use up all my remaining custom text fields to do that. Let's take a look at an example. I'm just going to go ahead and close my system settings here. Oh, let's see. Let's um, let's pull up uh, John Shepard. Pull up his candidate record. And on my candidate records, I have two custom tabs, which are my custom objects. Okay. So, if I click under the emergency contacts tab. You can see that this custom object contains a lot of fields. I want to keep emergency contact information separate from other information on records. I really only need to see it in certain situations, but when I need it, I need it right there. Okay. So if I click on Add Emergency Contacts, I can fill out the field to add a new one. Okay. If you wanted to, you're also able to display custom objects on the overview and edit tab of your records. Custom objects are available for the corporate and enterprise edition. They're set up and maintained by Bullhorn Support. We do have an article in our knowledge base that details how you can create custom objects from Bullhorn Support, and uh, we'll go ahead and send that out following this webinar. Okay. I think we're done with John's record. Let's. Uh, 
Now I want to show you something uh, uh, um, about how to use correlated custom fields. I'm going to pull up a job. Lead technician job. So correlated custom fields. Um, Correlated custom fields were set up to carry the content of a field from the job record to the placement record. That way, users don't have to re-enter information that is likely the same as it is on the job. And it also reduces the error factor because type it once, use it in multiple places. Okay. So let's go ahead and I'm going to take you to the Edit tab. And we're looking for Client ID. Okay. You wouldn't know it by looking at it, but client ID number is a correlated field. A client ID number is a number that we use internally to associate with our clients. My company needs this number to appear on job and placement records. Because the field is populated, it'll appear on a placement record when one is created from this job. So I'm going to go ahead and um, add a placement just to show you. Okay. You know who'd be good at this job? John Shepard. All right. I'm going to go ahead and just save it. Okay. Now here we are. Let's go find our client ID number. Here we go. So you see that it just carried right over. The field and its contents are now on this placement. Now, if the client ID number on the job changes after a placement is created, let's just go back to the job itself. And we're going to say that, OK, now the client ID number that goes with this job is this number. We'll go ahead and save it. Okay, and let's go back to our placement and let's just go look at that field again. Hey, look, it did not change. The information must exist on the job record before adding a placement in order to make this information carry over. Okay, correlated custom fields are set up in field mappings on job and placement tracks. Let's go take a look. So go to Menu, Tools, Field Mappings, and let's just go to the Job Tracks. And we'll look for Correlated. And there you go. Look at how many correlated fields are available. Text fields, drop downs, date fields, and many more. If you're interested in setting up correlated fields, your Bullhorn admin can do that. Uh, there's documentation in the Resource Center, and we will send you uh, a link to that documentation after this webinar. But if you can't wait, it's there now. All right. So now, we've covered a lot of topics in this webinar. Let's, let's just take a look. We talked about goals and quotas. We looked at the change request list. We talked about how to find records without email addresses. How do you log notes? Uh, uh, outbound emails is notes. Putting an opt-out link on every email sent from Bullhorn. Some uh, tips on system settings, custom objects, and correlated custom fields. Okay. So as mentioned, we do have documentation. Um, that'll be sent out in one article following this webinar. And if you would like any of the discussed features enabled for your company and you are an account or support contact, uh, go ahead and contact our support team. Um, if it's something quick and simple, a little chat or a resource ticket, if it's something you'd like to discuss in more detail, a phone call is always best for that. Okay. So have a great day, everyone. Uh, thank you. Thanks so much, Colleen. It looks like we still have a few minutes for questions, and there were lots of questions. So let's see uh, how many we can answer. Uh, first up, referring to goals and quota, can I tie multiple note actions or appointment types to one goal? For instance, if I wanted to set a goal for the total number of interviews, 
could I use all applicable interview appointment types in my database? Sure. Let me uh, actually let me show you that. Bear with me. Bear with me a moment. All right. Goals and quotas. Can you tie multiple note actions? Let me just show you how it's easier. I'll go to menu and uh, home. Goals and quotas. Okay. So you can set up your goal and you can, uh, let's say the interviews, you have multiple ones for interviews. You could set, you pick an activity, then you pick another activity. Let's see, there's a final interview. I think I saw one other one for like in-house interviews. Then you add your users and then you set your goal because there's one goal box, it'll combine all of these together and, um, and you um, set them up that way. Okay, does that answer your question? Thanks, Colleen. Let's uh, let's see if we can answer another one. This one's a good one here too. If we use goals and quotas, how are users able to see which goals are assigned to them? <laughs> great, great question. So they can always go to goals and quotas. And remember how I got here was menu, home, goals and quotas. So they can see themselves in the list view. Look at me. Oh, I got a little bit of work to do here. Oopsie. Um, and there's also they can. Um, also use the My Activity Dashboard card. So I'm going to go to Menu, My Dashboard, and here it is. Oh my heavens, looks like I have a lot of work to do. I've done my cold calls, haven't done my submissions, but yeah, the user, the end user can definitely see uh, their progress. Thanks, let's see You're another welcome. one here. Can I report on changes made to placements? Okay, so placement changes and reporting. Yes, um, for that, I would recommend uh, the use of uh, Bullhorn's Canvas tool. That is um, an extra added cost feature, but it is something that can be implemented um, on, on Bullhorn, and you can report on any changes that are made to placements. Thanks. Uh, let's mm -hmm. see about another one here. Is it possible to locate all records that do have email addresses in my database? Oh, sure, sure. Instead of, um, let's say that if I was going to go in here and instead of setting up my search as an exclude, I would do an include, okay, and um, put my at sign in my asterisk and then it would oops at sign asterisk and then it'll search and it'll give you all the matching records mm -hmm. which we have quite a few that do have um, email addresses so go ahead uh, how about this one? Can I log inbound emails as notes? Oh, yeah, no, sorry. Only outbound emails can be logged as notes. And am I able to assign my own note action when an outbound email gets logged as a note? Oh, yeah. Um, assigning your own note action when an outbound email gets logged? You can definitely do that. Uh, for instance, if you want to use a note action of outbound email, you can do that. You can, uh, let's see, we would go to Tools, System Settings. I'm going to look for Note. Default Email Note Action Type. And then I can choose um, the uh, I can I can make my own I can set the value to what I would like it to be. Okay. An important question here: How do I know if a record has opted out of receiving emails from me? Okay. Um, have they opted out? Well, the system will inform you that the person has opted out of receiving emails when you click on the e when you click send. If you click send, it'll give you a message. 
And uh, if I break my note actions apart with hyphens, will users be able to select the hyphens as a note action? <laughs> yeah, they actually can. Um, there's nothing that uh, would would define it as unusable. Um, so the uh, if you see someone is selecting the hyphens as a note action, um, you can you can actually look that up by uh, running the note activity report. Um, filter the report by uh, the note action consisting of, um, let's see, consisting of hyphens. So we can go to the note activity report. Hmm. Which I don't have assigned to me. But that's okay. Um, just assign yourself the um, uh, note activity report and then just run it looking for the hyphens and that will do the trick. You can filter it and see that. You could then also make sure that people who are doing it get the proper, you know, coaching so as they, they don't do it. All right. Sorry, I couldn't show you. I don't have it assigned to me. Thanks, Colleen. Looks like we have time for a couple more. Um, which entities can I have a custom object appear on? All of them except um, all of them except client submissions. Okay, everything except the client submission is able to have custom objects. And um, with the internal submissions. Sorry. A couple more here. Uh, can you search on fields that are within a custom object? Okay, can you search on fields that are within a custom object? Yes, um, when you fill out the custom object um, form, you're able to choose if you want the fields to be searchable or not. If you choose to have them searchable, um, you can uh, do so by running an advanced criteria on the corresponding list view. So here's your change requests. It works the same way every other list view does, okay? Thanks, Colleen. It looks like we're about out of time. Um, thank you, everyone, for all of the great questions. As Colleen mentioned, we will be sending out a recording and some additional documentation, uh, and we'll take a look at the questions that we were unable to answer today. Uh, so thank you, everyone, and have a great day. Thank you.